accurately? And the answer is yes, you absolutely have to position them accurately. That turns out to be a problem solved in 1885. Uh, kinematic mount, fabulous device. Uh, it's, we can talk about it in more detail. It's basically three steel balls, like in ball bearings, that sits in a cone, a groove, and a flat. Not a precision device. You can just make one in your garage. Yet when it is set down, it will reproduce the position with extraordinary accuracy. And it's even, to first order, self-temperature compensating. Amazing device. So yes, you can re-register these images if you shoot them from slightly different positions, rotations, or angles. But if you use a good kinematic mount, the problem is essentially solved for you. The devices are so good, they're so good in absolute accuracy that you really don't have to calibrate them um, nowadays. You're going to pay a little more for that kind of device. But in the end, we're mostly looking for changes, and typically fairly large changes, unless you really want to push the technique to incredible sensitivities. The question was whether you could use a different magnetometer. The answer is yes, there's some issues there. It's not totally trivial, but it's not, not nearly as difficult as you might think. Yeah, question. Uh, the question is whether the United States is doing a better job with seals and tamper detection for nuclear safeguards uh, compared to other countries. Now, I think my personal view is it's a mess all across the world. We really don't have effective tamper detection, um, especially for international nuclear safeguards. <laughs> a little bit better situation in most countries for domestic nuclear safeguards. But again, my view is it ought to be a lot better than it is. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, that's, again, some interesting semantics. Some people insist it's nuclear security and safeguards. Other people insist it's only nuclear safeguards. There's two kinds, and people confuse them all the time, including people who work in the field. There's domestic nuclear safeguards, where we want to stop the bad guys from wandering off with a, thermal nu with a nuclear device. And there's international nuclear safeguards, where we're trying to determine if a country is abiding by its promises vis-a-vis uh, -vis international treaties. Now, that latter is an extremely difficult problem. Number one, the adversary is a nation, very sophisticated technologically. But number two, everything's all backwards. In a traditional security application, the good guys own the assets and the facilities where they're stored. The bad guys try to break in and get to them. With international treaty monitoring, the bad guys own the nuclear assets. They own the facilities. The inspectors are not going to be allowed in much of the time. The people being inspected have to have entire circuit diagrams, all the software information for the devices. They may actually have to provide them. So you're in a situation where the burglars are providing the burglar alarms, maintaining them, and not allowing the inspectors access to the, the whole operation. So it's completely backwards, an extraordinarily difficult kind of security problem, um, but one that really, I think, hasn't um, had the, the kind of creative approaches uh, really needed. The domestic nuclear safeguards one is a lot better shape, but even that, I think, uh, needs a lot more work. Anything else? <coughs> if not, well, thank you very much.